Firstly, did you manage to catch any of the insane day one surfing from the Pipe Masters in Hawaii? If you haven't, there is a link in the description section below. Its conditions were near perfect and there was some amazing surfing. Once again, we could start this vlog with watching some of my less than flattering surfing from a bad session last year. But it's probably much more enjoyable to watch this point of view video and ask if you know what processes the surfer is using to catch the wave. And that when you watch the footage from the Pipe Masters in Hawaii, you will also see many other pro surfers utilizing. We are also going to introduce a second pro surfer who is responsible for the creation of one of the best mid length surfboards on the market today, the Wombat Egg, and share some of the things he has to say about the takeoff. If you use a mid length surfboard, you're going to love watching his waves and hearing what he has to say. I'm James Davis, and I've been a skydiver for over 20 years, jumping and competing all around the world. In the last 18 months, I've been surfing at the wave pool in Bristol to see if wave pools can do for surfing what wind tunnels did for skydiving. I wanted to see what would happen if an average surfer trained at the wave pool for a year if they could learn to get barreled, sharing all the mistakes, learning points and experiences along the way. In the last few videos, we've been using a frustrating surf session that I had a few months ago to highlight some common issues a lot of surfers seem to experience, which is the takeoff and then share some of the research I've found and advice from some pro surfers. It's also been pretty cool discussing things with some of you in the comments section and in person at The Wave in Bristol. Keep them coming. One of the comments from the last video really hit home and that was that pro surfers must find it very hard to relate to most of us as it's been so long ago in their journey that they were having similar issues. That's kind of the point of me sharing my experience because clearly I'm a relatively low level surfer and struggling with a lot of the same things other surfers are. By spending a bit of time researching and talking to some super helpful pros, it seems that there are some core fundamentals that we can all benefit from. Over the last few videos, we have covered what is needed speed-wise to catch a wave, setup positioning, And in the last video, we also got some input on body posture when paddling to catch the wave. In this vlog, we get some input on paddle tempo and how a staged approach to paddling versus going all out crazy can be a helpful thing. Okay, let's start with Patrick Bevan again. From where Patrick lives, he's used to surfing in powerful beach breaks, which have shifting peaks. That means he has a pretty slick process for looking at upcoming sets, getting positioned correctly and paddling to them. Now before I share his key advice with regards to paddling tempo, he was keen to emphasize that the most important thing is to be aware of where you are relative to the oncoming wave, understand what the wave is doing and adjust your paddling accordingly. Perhaps you could find yourself further inside than the ideal takeoff spot and therefore paddling for too long a duration would just take you further out of position and have the wave break on your back. Or perhaps you are too far back and need to paddle stronger and earlier to get into a position to actually make the wave. At the wave pool we don't really have this issue as the takeoff spot doesn't shift around materially so that part we can take out of the equation. When it is our turn to catch a wave at the wave pool it is very easy to just paddle like crazy. But now that I've learned you can't just catch a wave from paddling alone Perhaps there is something to also learn about paddling before the wave comes and using a staged approach. This point of view video is especially helpful because it shows Patrick's paddling process really well. What you can see is Patrick using a staged approach to paddling. He begins with three to four softer paddles just to get the water moving, be settled on his board and stay in the position he wants to be before moving into three to four really strong flat out paddles as the wave arrives. I hadn't really thought about it too much, but having a basic process in place and understanding that 10 crazy paddles isn't what is needed to catch a wave really helped me. Again, the caveat is that there is no hard rule to the number of paddles. It's more about getting the required speed to catch a wave from gravity, the wave's orbital energy and your paddling. See our previous video about this, there should be a pop-up banner above. 
That being said, getting settled, having a few paddles to get the board moving, being correctly positioned, and that once you feel the wave, only three to four hard paddles is all that is normally needed has been fantastic advice. Now Patrick isn't the only one who talks about having a staged paddling approach. So let's introduce Mr. Mark Phipps. Mark is originally from the Bells Beach area of Australia, but lives half the time in Hosigor, France, and the other half of the time in Australia. He is a master shaper and has over 40 years of surfing experience, known to many in the surfing industry, and just an all-round wizard when it comes to surfing. He's probably best known to most surfers as the creator of the One Bad Egg mid-length surfboard, and is a guy who you wouldn't normally find in the spotlight, or one of the nicest blokes you could meet. As you can see from these videos, Mark rips on a mid-length, short board, and indeed any board he uses. Okay, so when it comes to paddling tempo, Mark also suggested something similar. He uses the term three paddles, but four to be sure. If you look at this clip of him paddling for a wave, then you can see him using this approach. It is also worth highlighting what he is doing with his upper body when he is paddling for the wave, impact on the pitch of the board, and linking it back to the last vlog. See the banner above at the top of the screen if you haven't watched it yet. Like we discussed in the last vlog, once you've heard the explanation about using the upper body posture to help catch a wave, you start seeing so many good surfers using it. The final thing to share from this video, which is also a massive rookie comment, is that I didn't really know how deep to paddle or how much of the arm to use. Rob Case has some good stuff on his channel, but Mark kept it super simple, suggesting to use the forearm up to the elbow and pulling the strokes all the way back to the hip. Again, super basic stuff, but with huge incremental benefits once you know it. In the next video, we're going to finish off this takeoff discussion by sharing what options we all have for getting to our feet and how I can try to fix what I'm currently doing. From the comments section, some of you have already made some very savvy observations, but if you want to hear what Patrick, Mark and one more high level surfer have to say, then you're going to have to tune in to the next video.